Hi, I'm Alex Perrick, a Senior Product Manager with Tech Excel, and this is a quick overview of what Scrum is. Scrum is an agile development framework that allows teams to adapt to the changing nature of requirements by delivering software in small pieces that can be used to garner feedback from stakeholders and end users. This radically improves the quality of the final products as well as reducing risk and allowing return on investment to be realized sooner. The term Scrum comes from the idea of using a holistic or rugby approach where a team tries to go the distance as a unit passing the ball back and forth. This is in contrast to a more traditional waterfall or relay race approach. The roles in Scrum are inspired by a joke where a chicken suggests to a pig that they open a restaurant called Ham and Eggs. This story gives us the pigs who are totally committed to the project and its outcome, and the chickens who consult on the project and are kept informed of its progress, typically stakeholders and end users. The pigs are broken up into three roles. The product owner, who is responsible for compiling and prioritizing requirements, is often considered a representative of the client. The Scrum Master is a team guide. He ensures that Scrum practices are followed and that impediments are removed. The other members, such as developers, QA designers, and DB admins, comprise the rest of the Scrum team. Scrum projects begin with a product backlog. You can think of a product backlog as a wish list of input from all parties involved in the project, developers, executive, customers, support staff, and the like. This input is groomed and prioritized by the product owner, typically in a user story format. Stories will usually start out as very broad general references to features, commonly referred to as epics, and then as items move up the backlog, the user stories will become more precise and oftentimes have acceptance criteria added. Acceptance criteria should be short bullet points that serve as minimum requirements that must be met before a story can be considered ready for QA. Our more precisely defined user stories, usually organized with themes, can then be used by the product owner to create a release backlog. This is a set of features required to build a product with sufficient value to be brought to market. Stories from the release backlog are used during sprint planning meetings to create tasks which will populate our sprint backlog. A task should be no longer than 5 hours of work. This forces the team to carefully consider the design while creating tasks and estimates. A quick word on estimates. Estimates can be done using poker games, pass releases, story points, or any other method you find suitable. No matter what though, be sure to include a few subject matter experts in your planning and estimation process. Getting back to our sprint planning though. When we are planning our development iteration, or sprint, we select stories from the release backlog that we believe can be accomplished within the set time frame usually two to four weeks, and break them up into estimated tasks. Once the scope of the sprint has been defined, it is up to the product owner to verify that the user's story sufficiently define the work that needs to be done. If the product owner is satisfied, then the user's stories and duration are locked in. Scrum teams are designed to be self-driving. This means that Scrum team members select which individual tasks they want to work on based on the priority given by the product owner. This is unlike a traditional project where tasks are assigned. We do this because of the belief that people developing the software or solving the problems know how to do it best. Frequent communication among all involved parties, pigs and chickens, is encouraged throughout the sprint. This helps to ensure that a project never heads too far in the wrong direction before being corrected. Daily stand-up meetings or scrums are used to quickly find out what work has been done since the last scrum, what work will be done before the next scrum, and what impediments need to be removed so the team members can function at peak efficiency. It is the Scrum Master's job to work with the product owner to remove any impediments to optimal team performance. Daily stand-up meetings are also a great place to review the sprint burndown chart. The burndown chart is a visual representation of the amount of work left to complete a project and it typically comes in two flavors, sprint and release. With a sprint burndown we start with our total task estimates and as work is completed we lower those estimates till they hit zero. This gives us our burndown line. Within a few days of the sprint starting, we can check the slope of our burndown line to gauge our velocity and estimate when all the tasks will be completed. The sprint burndown is generally used internally throughout the sprint and should be displayed somewhere prominent that all team members and stakeholders can see. A release burndown differs mainly in scope. Since with many products it will take multiple iterations to complete a release, a release burndown tracks overall velocity as progress is made towards a release. With the release burndown, we track story estimates and are more concerned with the average velocity over multiple sprints as opposed to the velocity of individual sprints. Testing takes place immediately after a story is completed. QA teams are commonly tasked with writing test scripts at the beginning of a sprint while a story is being developed. Any defects discovered during a sprint should be addressed immediately, however in the real world, lower priority defects are often moved into the backlog for prioritization. 
Since it is up to the product owner to declare when enough business value to merit deployment has been realized during an iteration, it is a good idea to give demonstrations to the product owner as stories are finished. This will help to ensure that the sprint is on track and any miscommunications are handled. There are two meetings that take place at the end of our sprint, the sprint retrospective and the sprint review. The main purpose of the sprint retrospective is to realize improvements driven by the team. During this meeting, the scrum team discusses what they'd like to start doing, what they need to stop doing, and what they should continue doing. The team can then take the lessons learned and make concrete changes to ensure future sprints run smoothly. This ability to learn from past mistakes quickly while gradually improving is a sustainable way to greatly improve results over time. The second meeting is the sprint review. This is where we go over what was accomplished with the stakeholders and product owners to make sure we're on the right track. The main purpose of this meeting is to get feedback and improve the product. Sprints are repeated and reviewed until the product backlog is empty or the product owner decides that enough business value has been delivered to declare the project a success. It is not at all uncommon for the product owner to declare success with 20-30% to 30 of the initial backlog items still remaining. This is usually based on feedback from the end users who see the immediate benefit of the product in its current state. The leftover 20-30% to 30 of the initial backlog can now be skipped, saving time and resources. These are items that a traditional development process would have included, but which through an iterative and adaptive process the business owners and end users realized were not as valuable as initially thought. The result is higher quality, lower cost software delivered faster. So in summary, Scrum is an agile development framework that allows us to focus on delivering the highest business value in the shortest time. The business sets the priorities and the teams organize and determine the best way to deliver the highest priority features. These features are delivered rapidly and repeatedly as demonstrable working software so that informed decisions can be made on the business value and release worthiness of the product. So now that you know a little more about Scrum, be sure to check out DevSuite, TechXL's application lifecycle management tool. You can find more information on it at our website, www.techxl.com.